Hello, um, my name is Jerry Horner and this is Bella Vista Gardening and with me today is Barb Templin. She's a yes. fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club and she's so creative that she's joined me today to show us some of the things we can do uh, decorating naturally with natural elements and um, that's what we're going to be talking about today along with a few things you need to do in your garden in January. So um, there's not any activities really going on in December for gardening, you may want to <coughs> go to Crystal Bridges to go off the trails on a nice day, but there's really no activities that, um, that are uh, planned for December very much. We're just getting ready for the holidays, so right. uh, Barb's going to show us how we can get rid of, ready for the holidays using things just from your, your garden or the woods or <coughs> uh, natural things. So um, she's made some things up and we're going to well, talk about them. First of all, thank you for having me. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, is that when you are decorating naturally, you are using things from your garden, the woods, uh, whatever, and that makes it also economical. Um, you can be so creative with uh, a minimal amount of things. Um, starting out is I have made a hickory uh, shell tree, and this is the finished product. This is it before it, okay. I spray paint it. This is what it looks like when I don't uh, spray paint it. And you can see the, the different um, variations of the shells. Uh, but it's, if you want a natural you, look, you can leave right. it that way. It's, that's right. You know, or you can it. just glitterize it, you know, which is what I do on most everything. But the large one and is the one that's... Um, yes, and this cool. is the one, the large one is the one that is um, uh, um, finished. And what I did there is I spray painted it, and while the paint was still wet, I went and dusted it with both glitter and that fake snow, so it looks... Okay. So we got the snow here. Right. Um, and you Just can get that snow. at any craft store. Uh, it, it's there again very economical. Mm -hmm. Now if you're making uh, small things like the two that I have in the front here, there are different <coughs> options for you to um, make them a little bit higher and they're very inexpensive. This is just an inexpensive glass uh, thing, uh, candle. candle holder, mm -hmm. and so what I do with the candle holder is you can keep it clear or you can spray paint it any color but what I do is I put the tree on and then it's got uh, a nice stand. So it's a little more elevated. Yeah. Right, right. Um, the cones, they're just the styrofoam cones that I've used um, and when you're working with hickory shells I need to show you that you are working with the outside of the shell. And people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah, mine don't break open like that that I noticed. Mine are just so solid. What you're doing is you're just removing the outer part of the shell. Like so. Yeah. And then you take it and I use hot glue and I just hot glue each piece so you're taking one piece at a time and just, gluing it to the It just styrofoam. takes a little time to do all that yes. but the end result is really pretty and they last a long time. They last They'll forever. Last forever. forever. So. What I did on this one on the, the uh, acorn tree is um, first of all nature provides us with so many different varieties of acorns from little bitty to medium size yeah. and then to, we do have some over there to um, show you yes and the one thing you have to know about acorns is you just don't pick them up from your garden and put them in your um, uh, uh, arrangement or your decoration I don't know if you can see the little holes that are in these mm -hmm. but there's a little larva in there and if you don't bake oh, them first um, 
at 350 degrees in your oven on a you know flat pan uh, for 20 minutes then uh, you're gonna have these little critters burrowing out and dropping on the floor and most people don't care for that um, also you can use your um, acorns either without the uh, nut in them if you don't if you choose not to then you can put a seed you can put um, a pearl you can put mm. uh, you know a little something. jewel in there yeah huh? yeah well something I sure didn't know anything about those worms that is such a a new thing I've never I've seen the holes in the acorns but I've never knew why they were there well, and let me I don't tell you, want when worms you see, in my house. When you, <laughs> when you see a few hundred of those little oh, bitty no. things, you know, crawling around, you really don't want to, yeah, no, you know, no, no. mess with that. So that the oven will take care of those little worms. That's and, right. Yeah. And now then this other acorn I wanted to tell yeah. you about. That's the, well, the large all, the, one. The the one that's shiny. That's the one that I lacquered. Okay. You so, can spray paint that with. Uh, yep. You can clear. Yep. And okay. that, it makes, just gives it a different look. It's not that dull look. It's a right. little shinier look. So, um, but the other larger acorn that um, is down there, that's from a bur oak, and there's not too See? many bur oaks around. And yeah, that's I've never really seen that. not even one of the largest ones. They are very big. Wow. And um, there was one on the country club. I think it's hole four on the left, and they had to cut it down a few years ago. But I would go play golf, and I'd gather up all these <laughs> acorns in the golf cart so but there's another one on Kingswood and there there's a few around but they're a bur oak and they just have these huge acorns that are just so great to decorate with so well and if you're using acorns or uh, hickory shells and you um, there's so many different varieties of uh, techniques that you can use to decorate them mm -hmm. and these are just spray painted ones I just spray painted uh, silver. You mm -hmm. can spray paint it white. You can, but then you know, to me, nothing's really complete until I glitterize it, which means <laughs> you, have to. you know, glitterizing me yeah. and myself. And then I've also taken the acorns and just sprayed like a, a one side, just to give it a little color mm -hmm. and not be as uh, bright. But if you just want to give it a, a just a little hint of color, I just spray it down and let it go on one side. This one has a little different look to it and the reason that it has a little different look is I decided you know that spray uh, snow that you can put on windows or whatever decorate Trees, with? Yeah. You can uh, spray paint it with that and it kind of does give you that It's like a um, frosted look. Right, right. Yeah. So. But the other things that you can do, I have here, here's one, uh, this is a, actually an ornament that you can buy, but you can see it's spray painted gold, but the edges are glitterized. And the way that you do that is in the front here is the, that's glue with glitter in it. Oh, that's already got the glitter and the glue mm -hmm. together. Oh, that's good. Then this is a little pine cone that I, mm -hmm painted and uh, I just held it, painted it, you know. Uh, do you use the acrylic paint on that? Yes. Okay, so you can use spray yes. paint or acrylic. And you know the spray paints are so many colors. Oh my gosh. In spray paint now. Yes. And, you and there's the so many finishes. There's right. flat, there's right. semi-gloss, there's gloss, there's, yeah. you know, everything. But when you, when you go get your paint, I mean some people are decorating in real odd colors. You know, oh, like yes. lime green and hot right. pink. And you're not going to find, you know, too much in those colors. So you can actually get the spray paint right. and do your decor, you know, that way. This particular acorn, I first uh, spray painted it uh, silver. And then I wanted to kind of give it a different look to it. So I painted it w with the acrylic red. And then I kind of wiped it off a little bit. And this is how you get yeah. Or you can uh, sponge that. it on, too. You can yes. sponge paint on. Yes. Give it a sponge look. The one thing about acorns is you can use them as a whole acorn. You can cut them in half and use them in half. Or if you turn them around, 
you can see that you can make a flower. Yeah, the very uh, bottom of it looks like a flower. Right. And my uh, my cousin in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, has a, has pine trees, and they put out acorns that are about almost pine cones. Or pine cones um, that are so big that she would send them I've to never me, seen them. and I would make trees out of them. So they would be almost you know, they'd be bigger than that and smaller than that. But I would take little ornaments if I could find them. And sometimes you can't find small ornaments, so you can use the beads, these string beads. Just exactly. cut them off and make them an ornament, because um, the smallest ornaments sometimes aren't very small. But I would make um, trees out of those pine cones, and they just look like a little Christmas tree. They mm -hmm. were so cute. And then you can put your, your um, decoration, your pine cones, along with assorted yeah, um, uh, uh, ornaments, different colors, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing to that. Yeah, that's you know. really simple. Um, and you can add cranberries. Cranberries are yes. a good thing to put in the glass containers. And what they have now, which is really nice, is they have battery-operated small strings of lights from oh, yeah. seed uh, size up to a, a regular LED size. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can just put those in put there. Put some lights in there. Be and beautiful. the battery pack you can hide. Mm -hmm. it, it just it just opens up a whole new thing. There's all kinds of new things we can do and for decorating now. For um, a, a centerpiece, what I have done here is I went out and collected all, well, the best shaped uh, uh, oak, leaves. oak leaves. And then I spray painted them. But like I said, you know me, I have to glitterize too. <laughs> so, you know, I spray paint and glitterize. And all this is, is it's a styrofoam base, uh, a circle. And what I've done And the is styrofoam you use now is the, is the styrofoam for dried materials. Correct. If you correct. use the Oasis that's for uh, wet, you know, to keep things fresh, it's, right. it's going to be too soft. So you have to be sure your styrofoam is for the, your, your right. dried materials. The way that you're going to put these in, because you want to be able to reuse your styrofoam. I mean, sure, you can hot glue these all in and make it a permanent thing, but um, uh, what I use is to uh, keep them where I want them is I take either one leaf or two, and then I take this pin, and here again, this is something that you can get at... Um, is it the hobby stores or the box that's stores? That's right. Or, you know? That's right. And then you just kind of pin it in there so that it will hold up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and like I said, these become then invaluable, these little pins. Yeah, those um, are great to, to so work So that with. you can, the way that you finish it off then, because you'll see that you still might have some uh, styrofoam, is I've got a lot of <laughs> glittery, um, uh, tape and you can put that around uh, just the ribbons the ribbon here mm -hmm. or you can do for Christmas you can do a ribbon like so mm -hmm. and that really makes it uh, yeah, fun. It's really festive that way. Now the other things that See, I... See this would be good for New Year's too you know right if you're gonna have a New Year's party those the silver and red really is well does well for New Year's yes with Christmas yes so. And um, I also have taken and spray painted uh, several things, um, branches and whatnot. And just for the heck of it, I thought I'd spray paint. You know, we all see these ornamental grasses oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere, yeah. And I thought, well, I wonder if you could spray paint these. So I went out, cut mine, and spray painted it. And it. Um, it adds a different uh, texture. Yeah, that's what um, you're looking for, is when you're doing designs, you want different textures, not everything the same. And right. All right. these things you see in the woods with all these different looks and textures are just wonderful to work well, with. And, and, and then you um, are going out and you're just finding little branches, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, you think has some uh, nice basic designs. The reason that I like this particular branch is because all these little extra branches are places that I can add uh, acorns or pine cones 
such with the as ornaments on there, or little jewels, or right, such as this. I uh, added the acorns, also you know some of the uh, threads from the hot glue, so don't mind that. Um, but the painted uh, uh, pine cones, the painted uh, acorns, and here again, just the top, just yep. the cap. You just mm -hmm. want to make it, you know, a, a little, add a little thing to it. Now this one, I painted the, the pine cones a different color, and that red pine cone... It really pops. It really does. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost looks like you've got a rose on there. Mm -hmm. But it's just, um, like I said, it's, it's adding more uh, texture, mm -hmm. more color, and here again... Different shape. This branch is uh, spray painted and then glitter. glitter. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Barbara does like her glitter. She yes. really does. Bling. Her bling. Now this one, uh, this is uh, to represent this branch is, uh, you've seen ice uh, on an ice storm. We don't want to ever see that on our We want to see it roads. on television. Right. Right. So these fake ones are really nice. And what I did is I cut my branch, I spray painted um, just a clear lacquer on there, and then I rolled the, um, these moisture holding crystals. Um, well, that's that, what we put in our pots in the summer to keep the moisture in our pots. Right. They're just the... But uh, once they, they uh, uh, glue and adhere, it does look, it looks like, like ice, you've got ice, ice on there. Yeah. The other way that you can do it is that you can use a brush and Mod Podge um, and just brush on uh, the glue, the Mod Podge, and then sprinkle or roll them in uh, uh, the oh. branch in that, those things. Well, Epsom salts works too. Right, and I have example of the Epsom salts. Now, it doesn't have such a... It's, uh, more, it's more subtle, but it right. does look like, it almost looks like snow. Just right. Just like snow sticking right. to the branch. And um, here again, Mother Nature provides us with so many different options. Creatively, it's endless, uh, the things that you can, you yeah. can do and add and group together and right. uh, all of that. Now, a real popular thing here uh, is holly. Mm -hmm. And holly lasts a long time. Um, and you can do so many things. Um, you can uh, uh, put it in uh, an arrangement such mm -hmm. as this. And it doesn't usually need to have water for quite no, a while. No, for quite a while. Yeah. Um, a it stays green. Right. The berries stay red. Uh, and so that's another natural thing. And I'm. I think it's kind of like a law down here that you have to have a holly bush somewhere so. in your yard. It's part of the requirements. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, um, and the other thing that really lasts a long time is your nandina. Mm -hmm. The nandina, um, the small one, the heavenly bamboo, um, that will last a long time without water. And it'll just kind of stay, you know, with that color almost through the whole winter. I put it outside on my... See, and I, that's and I something I, I learned. But it just, I didn't know it just that stays, fun, you know, without any water. The other thing I pulled was the um, uh, abelia. My abelias were blooming, and so I pulled some abelia. Now you can dry these. Um, you can uh, just put them, turn them upside down, and you know, in the garage, and dry them for a couple weeks, and then spray them. But it's the it's the texture that is um, now. Will so the flowers different. stay? They should stay like on that? there okay. pretty well once they're dried. And um, of course, your leaves will turn brown, but when you spray them, you know, mm -hmm. you spray them silver, gold, any color. Mm -hmm. But it's just the texture, it's just different texture that right. you're looking for. There's like so many, many other things that things we have here. here. And then, the, the, of course, the hydrangeas. People use a lot of hydrangeas. I had used this as a, uh, uh, in a design for. Um, something else that, but it mm -hmm. was orange and red and, and yellow that I needed so but you can spray these any color uh, the hydrangeas and once they're sprayed they do kind of you know Stay. last they're pretty fragile yes at first like this is a 
This is your mop head hydrangea, and this is your um, um, oak leaf hydrangea. Now, then when they dry them, depending on what time of the year or what, what time of the bloom, they either turn brown or they keep their color. It just depends it on what stage. Does it matter when you uh, It's your timing them? of when you cut them. You know, okay. if, if you cut them earlier or at their peak, I think you get the color to remain. Oh, and then okay. if you wait till they fade a little, then they're going to be the brown. But you can still uh, paint them. Um, and then you can also just take one of the flowers um, off, the one of the little petals. And I've used these oh. on um, my topiaries. Yes, just and you glue can them do, all on once a again, you can do so many things right. with that. Make individual and flowers. This is protea. You can get the, pro we can't grow protea here because no. it's a tropical. <laughs> but you can get the protea uh, dried at most of your hobby stores. Then this is one I bought and then I just sprayed it red. So it's, you know, it's, it's a protea, but it's a little different variety. And then you have your sunflower center. That's from yes. the sunflower. Did you grow the sunflower? No, I did oh, not. My neighbor grew oh, your na it. Oh, see, neighbors are good to have to yes, get all these are. things from them. So this is the middle of a, and see, the texture is just so different. You know, and you spray it a different color. It'd be really pretty. Your magnolias, of course, most people do have a magnolia down here. And if you don't, your neighbor might have one. Right. And the uh, seed pods are great to use. Um, because they've got such a great texture. And of course, there's little seeds in there. The little red and seeds. And you use the little red seeds on the uh, right. tree. Um, so if you take the seeds tree. out, you got seeds, and then you can spray these. And they're just shaped so differently, right. you know. Right. Then the lotus pods, these are another great thing. If you have a lotus tree, or if your neighbor has a lotus tree, these are the lotus pods. And, you, you know, these have got so much movement in them, so you can use these. Uh, spray those, and so or you can, can use them natural. So if you can spray an ornamental grass, you can spray right. just, just about, about anything. anything. And if you want the normal, uh, the uh, the natural look, a lot of them are going to that natural look this year. And um, of course, one of our garden club friends, she's um, she's doing the natural, and she wanted to yes. use antlers. So she found. A, yes. uh, I told her about the uh, the meat processing place in um, near. Um, on Highway 60, mm -hmm. and um, you can go to a meat processing plant. And they're relatively inexpensive. Well, I think they there. were $20 a pound, now that, which is very, yeah. re very reasonable for antlers. And you may be pieces, and maybe a whole one, but um, antlers are really popular to work with now. So that's another natural thing you can work with. So the other things that that you can do when you're decorating um, uh, a piece like the little tree here mm -hmm. is that I use not only seeds but I also used some uh, jewelry making uh, pieces. Oh those um, little caps you'd put on a bead or something. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, this top one I kind of flattened out so that... Um, it kind of looks uh, like a little flower up there. Right, yeah. but you'll notice too besides the the red seeds and then the silver thing there there is also in here a of pearls. pearls. Oh yeah, pearls um, are always good. Now you can have some old costume jewelry sometimes. Yes. And take it apart and use those little Th pieces those are the too. Best, so. Those are the best Well, we've things. got a lot of stuff to work on here for yes. the season. Yes. And then also we need to work on the, um, the um, things to do in your garden for December. There's not a lot to do in December in your garden. No. But as you're out there gathering things, you may see some things that need attending to. Right. Um, your well, annuals. And if herbs. you have annuals growing still, then mm -hmm. it's a Christmas miracle. Right. <laughs> um, but your, except for uh, your pansies. pansies. Right. And, and you just have to make sure maybe. that um, we have them watered. Mm -hmm. um, they are very cold tolerant, so yeah. uh, I'm, I'm surprised at that. But well, what you have to do too with your annuals is you have to make sure that um, if you've planted them in your uh, pots, Empty the pots out. Make sure the pots are empty. Otherwise, the um, yeah the moisture gets in there and they'll right, freeze they'll, and crack. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Or I, I, sometimes I just turn them over. Right. You know, and they won't get wet. Um, and then your bulbs. Um, if you got your, it, if you haven't got all your bulbs in the ground, <laughs> this is a good time. I still have a couple to get in. Um, but your spring blooming bulbs can be still planted in in December. Right. Uh, we've had some really great weather lately. It hasn't oh been gosh. very cold yet. Yes, so. that's wonderful. And then you have to mulch them to protect them from freezing, so they don't go, 
you know, up and down on the ground. Um, and then, of course, roses. Um, roses are, are pretty dormant right now. Right, and and this would be the time to cut them off so that come spring. Well, you don't want to trim all of them too back too yet. It's not February. Right, maybe. but all the dead uh, uh, flowers and some of those yeah. ugly looking uh, leaves. Um, but there again, they will do better if you mulch them. Right, mulch is always good. And then the lawns can just keep the leaves off the lawns. That the leaves will smother the lawns, even though it's winter time. But they'll keep the sun off, and, and you need to um, you need to keep the leaves off the lawn. Um, and you don't want to walk on frozen grass. If you walk on frozen grass, it's it might really damage it. So be careful. Be yeah. You use your walkways and your and your yeah. driveways. Now and your trees and shrubs, you want to make sure that they have enough moisture. Um, and here again, they do uh, uh, um, do better with mulch, but nature provides a, a lot of nice mulch mm -hmm. in the form of leaves, leaves. that have fallen. Right. Uh, and so if you've got a tree or a bush un and there's a clutter of, of leaves under there, That'd be fine. leave it. Yeah. Leave it. And then your tropicals and your house plants. Um, um, they still need water if you have them in the garage. I have mine in the garage. I water them about once a month. Um, <clears throat> but you still watch for pests or disease. You know, make sure you don't have any critters on them. And um, keep them out of drafts. If you have a, like a poinsettia you've, you've bought, you know, keep it out of a draft and um, and away from registers and all. And keep it, again, it needs a lot of light. Mm -hmm. um, so, and live Christmas trees really need water. If you have a live Christmas oh, tree, yes. be sure and cut it off um, before you put it in the in the holder, and, and let it soak in warm water before you bring it in the house for about a day. Then, after it's in the house, be sure and check that water every day. And it's, it's just plain just, water, right? It, it, I know that there were um, there's preservatives where, they talk about, yes, but, or Seven Up or yeah, whatever, Coke or you something, know. Yeah. No, it is just plain, plain ordinary water. water, right? Right. Now for per perennials, um, uh, we've talked uh, in previous shows about seed collecting, but um, uh, right now, if you leave some of the uh, seed pods on your perennials, um, the birds are going to love you for oh, it. Yeah, um, and then when it snows, it gives you more texture in your garden. There. It's beautiful when it right. snows, and it looks glittery. <laughs> <laughs> you like glitter. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> okay. The one thing you don't want to cut on your perennials, though, is your salvia. Anything with a, a hollow stem, if you start cutting back your perennials and you see a hollow stem, don't cut that back because water can get in there and freeze and kill the plant. And I was worried, I was wondering why my salvia died every year. It's because I cut it back. And I just leave it now, so I have salvia that comes back. Right. right. And then don't forget to feed the birds over the winter. Um, um, the colder it gets, the more protein they need, and um, it's just great at this time of the year to sit back and watch the birds in the snow, if we have any snow, because um, it's been such a mild uh, fall well, and warm fall. We, we, I don't know if we're going to have too much snow. You just don't know. You just, you don't, just know. don't know. Okay. But this time of the year to just, and this is true with each season, but also the uh, uh, winter season, Mother Nature does such a beautiful job in uh, affording us all kinds of beauty in mm -hmm. any form, the right. frost flowers, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. You know, you just have to be open to um, seeing those things, right. you know, not just, just... enjoy them. That's right. right. That's right. Okay, if you have any other questions about gardening, uh, you can... Um, Go to the Bella Vista Garden Club website, it's bellavistagardenclub.com, and also the um, Master Gardener website has a lot of good information. It's uh, bentoncountygardening.org. And um, the next meeting of the Bella Vista Garden Club will be January 27th. It's the fourth Wednesday of the month, and it's at the um, Lutheran, uh, United Lutheran uh, Church on Cooper Road. And the program is going to be um, David Rains, and he is... Uh, a certified arborist, and he owns um, Rain's Tree Care. He's a wonderful arborist, and, and um, his topic is going to be um, trees of Arkansas. So that's great. And then our horticulture topic is going to be planting or pruning. So um, and guests are always welcome. And the pruning, I'm sure she's going to say, don't prune your 
your plants to get your arrangements <laughs> to misshape them. You know, be careful when you prune to, yes. to decorate, <laughs> you know, that you don't misshape your plants. Um, but thank you, Barb, for coming today well, and sharing you all your wonderful glittery <laughs> ideas. They're thank wonderful. You for having um, me and I want to wish everybody a very Merry right. Christmas. And have a safe Christmas and a Merry Christmas, Christmas and a, and a safe New, New Year. Year and I hope you've enjoyed the show and will join us next month and um, we'll be starting another gardening year next month and until then don't forget to stop and smell the roses.